How old were you when you left Montgomery? 19. Okay, where did you go first? Here. Oh, you just came straight to here. What came about here. Nashville? Why Country Music City, USA? Well, my wife at the time, we had got married, and then she was going to Vanderbilt, so I just moved up here. What? How old were you when you got married? 19. 19. Wow, you did all, you were so young. Well, I had a kid. Okay. I got a 21-year-old daughter now. Okay. I had her, and I was going through some stuff with her, and I was like, I need to do something, because working in Montgomery wasn't cutting it. So I was trying to go build a life somewhere, and ended up here. Oh, fantastic. Do you like it here? I used to. I kind of question it now. We'll get into that later. But yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, at first though, yeah, I actually loved it here. Um, tell me about what it was like with your your wife because you guys were married up up until and then through Lucius's uh, untimely death. So, what was that like courting all that stuff? Like when you go back, like when you were nineteen, I'm trying to figure. Like when I was nineteen, all I gave a shit about was Ronnie Coleman videos and working out. I'll be honest, like you know, like <laughs> Mitsui Kabi videos. You're like, oh, you get them, and like Lee Priest, all those guys. So I, I couldn't imagine being a dad, let alone wanting to. Say I'm all in with someone. At well, 19. the we met um, in the seventh grade. Wow. Yeah, and it just went from there on up, and um, we split up for a while, and we got back together. And when we split up, that was when my daughter was conceived. But then me and her split, and we end up together after that, and uh. I was going through some custody stuff with her, and I was like, I need to make money. Like, I, I got to find something else to do. And so we agreed to get married and all this other stuff, and I moved up here, and the rest of it was history. So. <laughs> How long were you guys married before you guys had Lucius? Uh, almost five years. Almost five years. What were the first five years like with you guys? Rough. <laughs> Okay. Um, emotionally, I was very crazy because uh, I was fighting a custody battle, and every time I went to court, it just seemed like they didn't give a damn about anything I had to say, even though I had proof. So it just made me spiral. Custody courts are tough. I had to go They're the devil. that with my old, with my youngest son, and that was like, yeah. holy shit! Like, and that was something like I. I, I I told one of my buddies once, I'm like, dude, there is no equality oh, none. at all none. in those courts. <laughs> you walk in, they look at you like, mm, that's a man. That you know what he's talking about. Yeah, <laughs> no, not going his way. And it sucks because, you know, in the case uh, for, for mine, I'd be curious to hear yours. It was like you just didn't even get a chance to no. talk. And that was what bothered me. They were just kind of just like, yeah, yeah, shh. And I was like, oh man, oh my God. I don't even care. I know I got to pay something, but I'm trying to like figure out how all this works because I'm trying to understand like what more I've got to actually do. Yeah. And, and this is like all this craziness that I can be dragged <laughs> back to court if I fart the wrong way and say I'm not giving her $5. In an instant. Right. You know <laughs> what I mean? So uh, I want to know. And they just we even, even hear it. So that's how that it made you emotionally crazy. What was going on that strained you so much? Just that I knew at the time my daughter was in a shitty situation and the courts just didn't give a damn. And I just kept pointing out, I'm like, with me, she's literally like, she would have had her own room. Um, she would have been going to Vanderbilt because Vanderbilt actually has an elementary school and stuff too. I didn't know that at the time, but when I found out, I was like, huh. But since my wife at the time was an alumni, my daughter could have got in for free. Mm. So I had all this set up and they literally looked me in my face and were like, well, we know it's not the best situation she's in, but we think it's better. How? Like, I, I'm, I'm trying to make sense of this. So I'm driving down to Montgomery for court every couple of weeks. That's why I end up not being in school anymore. Because they said I was missing too many days. I'm like, I'm in court. Well, you still miss too many days. Like, well, fuck it. I'll just go get a job then. Don't worry about it. And I didn't look back after that either. Did you feel like that was like a, holy shit, this is fucked, moment? I'm literally 
trying yeah. to better myself, trying to better another person's life, trying. and then <laughs> I'm literally just getting executed every shot. Railroaded, every step man. It was, it, was, it was one of those things, and I mean, and she was pushing me, and I know, I knew later that, you know, it was out of love or whatever, but at the time, I was just so stressed that I was like, I'm tired of fighting. Leave me alone. So you withdrew. Well, I started lashing out at her, and then once I realized I was doing I'm like, I'm going to lose my marriage if I don't stop this. Like, this is way too much stress. And that's when I was like, you know what? I'm going to just leave it in God's hand. Whatever happens, happens. Um, I don't like this idea, but I, I just had to back away. You don't like what idea? The idea of leaving it in God's hands? No, nah, I back away from my daughter. Because I couldn't keep fighting because it was literally pushing me. I was like, I'm going to do something I don't have no business doing. Because she's playing with my kid. The courts are playing with me. I don't know what else to do. I'm finna snap. And I was like, you know what? I made the choice to wait till she was 18. And I'll reach out to her then. At that point, she can speak for herself. Well, that was a, a rough thing. Because I literally reached out on her 18th birthday. And she was mad. I figured that. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she I, has right to be mad. Every uh -huh. right. Every right. And that's what I told her. I'm like, when she started going off, I'm like, I'm going to let you do that because I'm owed that. Now, once you finish, we're going to sit down and have a talk. Because I'm going to hear your side, hear all your grievances, but we need to talk afterwards. And it's been a rough road, but I think we're finally making headway. Um, I got my first grandchild now. Congrats. So, appreciate it. So, how long has it been since you reached out on our 18th birthday to now where you made headway? How many months... Did that take? I presume a little bit. I presume the, first year, a the first year was hell. First year. Okay, so she gave it to you for a year. Deserved. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, I just kept telling him, like, look, like I'm I know you hurt, but I'm not interested in being yours or nobody else's emotional punching bag. Like, we can talk about this. We can go to council, we can do whatever you want to do. That's cool. But you're not gonna keep beating me over the head. Yeah. So, because I mean I'm here for you. I'm trying to be here for you. I don't mind it. But you're not going to abuse me. So it was a whole bunch of back and forth. And now we kind of on flat ground and we're just cruising along. So it looks like everything's okay now. How often have you seen her? Whenever I go to Montgomery, I talk to her every week, though. Oh, yeah? Yeah. How's that been? Is that like kind of filled a part of your heart for you that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I actually did. Nice. So, I mean, she's, she's my firstborn. I mean, it's my baby girl. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, that's like the thing. Sometimes the court system I found to be, I really thought the way it was for me that they were just trying to make me submit. And if I hadn't had the fight in my backyard, it probably would have, I probably would have arrived at the same situation you had because yeah. going back and forth, losing school, losing potentially a marriage. Potentially losing a job, yeah, everything, or job, yeah, <laughs> just to keep going. At what point you're not even able to get ahead to help your daughter out so what's the point? in the future? Yeah, you're yeah. better off escaping because that's always going to be you're the target, and it has nothing to do with anything else. And that's typically how it is when it comes to us. So, a hundred percent. Where are we at for time on this? Uh, you got about seven minutes. Okay, uh, cool. I was just, can I ask a question? Yeah, no, go ahead. Um, I was going to ask you real quick, uh, whenever you reach out to her, uh, so my, I'm, I've been kind of reacting to what you're saying over here because my dad went through a very similar situation. And as an adult now, it's, I, I look at it and I say that was fucked up. And yeah. he was treated wrongly and et cetera. So I, I, that hits home for me. But whenever you finally, when you made that decision, right, mm -hmm. and then you talked to her at 18, obviously she was mad and you said, I know you're going to be mad, et cetera. But did you try to explain to her, like, the realities of the situation and like that you were, tr that you tried, you know, like it wasn't like you just disappeared. Like you were, you yeah, were trying. I, I explained it to her, um, in the best way possible. Cause I tried to keep her mom out of it. Cause even though I know that's commendable, I didn't look <laughs> yeah. Yeah. one thing I would have noticed, like the say, cause I said one thing when she asked me why reach out to me now. Mm -hmm. And I told her like, well, I figured that when you turn 18, technically you're an adult. So I can talk to you one-on-one -on -one without any outside interference. The immediate next words out of her mouth was, don't hit my mom over the head. My mom was good to me and all this other stuff. And I'm like, okay, I respect that. But my truth is my truth. But I won't speak about her again. Let's just talk about me and you. And that's where we went with it. So 
it was just a sore spot, but I found out later on that there was a bunch of other stuff going on that I didn't know about. And I guess she slowly started seeing it, but she still had that hurt towards me because I left her. And so I was more so focused on repairing that than trying to badmouth somebody or justify something. I merely just wanted to know her, let her know why I left and why I came back when I did. Did you go to any counseling before you did this? Go talk to anybody? Journal about it? Nah. Was it just like in the driving back and forth with what you're doing? This was unfolding in your head. Yep. How, how many times did you rehearsed? Had you rehearsed? Sorry, better said. Sorry. I don't rehearse. Uh, no, no, rehearsed in your mind how that would have gone down. Like, like for over the years, did you ever just think, okay, well, she's 18, I'm gonna say <laughs> this, and this is how it's gonna go, and it went the way it did, obviously. But I'm just curious how often you like really played that out and thought that out. Was it like every day? Honestly, I never thought about it. Really? I just was waiting on that day because I, I knew okay. it'd probably be rough, but I never really cared. I'm like, I just miss her and I just want to talk to her. Okay. So as far as how it went, I'm like, it's only one or two ways it's going to go. Either she's going to talk to me or she's going to spaz out on me and not talk to me. So we're just going to see what happens. Because I, I knew this when I rolled the dice and said I was going to wash my hands of it until she became of age. So I knew the risk going into it, but I didn't have much of a choice.